Howdy. How's everyone doing? I hope y'all are doing wonderful. Uh, I This is just a video that I am mirroring and sharing with anyone that would like to enjoy seeing something like this. Because I'll tell you what, I enjoy seeing things like this. Um, and you want to talk about creativity and, uh, I mean, there's some people that get paid really good money because of how good they really are. I mean, <laughs> just wait till you see what I mean by, I mean, this guy, I, this guy, let me hear, let's just put it like this. There's a lot of marble in this house and the guy that. I'm pretty sure he's he was the architect. He, he designer, architect, I don't know. what. You, maybe he was the designer of the house. But this guy is like carving marble on his own. And I mean, I mean, this dude built the house. So anyway, I'm going to jump off of here and just show you guys one of the coolest houses I've ever seen in my life. The interior design in this house, it's not my preferred style. It is my style. It's my vocabulary, my shapes. And also that's informed by the bones that Ken gave me. It's a reaction to the shapes that he laid down. Over the years, it's still changing and growing. It is almost like a living object. My name's John Buckeran. I'm the interior designer and fabricator on the Kellogg Doolittle Project. It was built for... Real quick, I hope you all are aware of mud fossils and are aware of the fact that there is absolutely no such thing as biology. Or I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's absolutely no such thing as geology here in this realm that we live in. There is no such thing as ge geology. There's geography, but not geology. Why is there no geology? Because everything that they say is geology is actually biography. <laughs> biography. Biology. Geology is made up it is the word used for biology because that's exactly what at least in this realm every rock every piece of dirt every piece of land is from the remains of a very large animal or or person being the I'm telling you now <laughs> I, I, this was not my plan <laughs> but here I go there were there were giant trolls trolls were very real and I'm talking like in the way that we are have been come to think of what a troll looks like that's exactly what the fuck these things look like so here let me get back to this this home knowing that every rock on earth is a piece of something that used to live it could have been a tree as well plants sometimes those things have, the larger pieces of those things have survived like plateaus, plateau, a lot of plateaus are tree stumps or they're ankles from giants. That's usually one or the other. It's a plateau is either a tree that's been cut down, a very large tree, or a giant that died in the flood standing up and got 
you know, died standing up and, you know, was, uh, you know, in mud for God knows how long and they petrified. But that's, uh, that's for another video. The point is, is that there's, uh, there's rubble, there's uh, boulders all around this house. It's not rubble, it's, but it kind of is rubble. It's a, it's pieces of a, a, a body and probably a human giant. And they're using everything around it to build the house or pouring concrete or, or using marble. I don't know. This shit is just incredible. And when you think about it, it's built around these boulders. So in my mind, when I watch this, it's like, I wonder what body part that was. And I mean, anyway, let's continue and I'll shut up from here on. Bev and Jay Doolittle and the architect is Kendrick Banks Kellogg. I would describe Ken Kellogg as really underestimated genius. Construction started in 89. I came to the house in 1994. I've been at the house so many years and for such a long period of time, I feel like the house is a part of me. Like it's my identity. Jay Doolittle would always tell me, I don't care how long it takes or how much it costs. I just want you to do your best work. The new owner, Scott Leonard and I are continuing with basically the same relationship where you don't get carte blanche, but it's the best next thing to it. The terrain this house is situated on is 10 and a half acres, and it butts up to the Joshua Tree National Forest. I'm sure when Ken saw the starkness and the beauty when he came out here, it inspired him to do these shapes. The original owner of the house, Jay, was fascinated by fossils. Every other week when I arrived, he would have another book on fossils for me. So I tried to incorporate a lot of vertebrae type motifs. The whole time I was building it, I had a pair of headphones on and I was listening to Miles and Monk and Coltrane. I just liked the repetition in jazz, but the whole thing forms another bigger picture. So it's what I try to do with my shapes. He's using frequencies to help his mind think the about what he's doing. The building on this side is 14 columns, and on that side is 12 columns. And you can see that they don't touch. There's close to a thousand panes of glass up there. Another challenging thing on this project is everything is coming up a golf cart path. Every piece of glass that you see in the house, some of them are 10 foot, 12 foot high, and five feet wide and weighs 600 pounds. Just getting things physically moved around here is really difficult. Dude. <laughs> oh, man. The only thing this house is missing is a Bad swimming pool. That was I mean, a painter. What were they thinking? She used these two tables here to do her artwork on and now they're used for uh, dining tables and entertainment. Originally, they weren't supposed to touch the ground at any point, but when the structure was done, and if you took your finger and just touched it, it would just vibrate. So I ended up putting these parts that come up to hold the glass. I lived in Carrara, Italy, where this marble's from, and I had a thin piece of it leaned up against a window and I saw the light passing through it. And it reminded me of alabaster, which they used to make lampshades out of. And the shape is inspired by the early Sputnik satellites that the Russians put into orbit. If you see these things in the dark building, looks like they're floating like stars in the sky. Because I was working on this house well into the evening, I knew how dark it was. When it came time to make the structure here, I decided to turn it into a lighting fixture that could light up the whole house. 
It was kind of inspired by a skeleton that's been bleached out of the sea urchin. It's got that kind of shape and it's got the little ridges on it. I always thought those were kind of pretty. This is one of nine exterior doors. Each door has to hit one column, but it has to go to the other. So in order for the door to function, I needed at least one straight edge. Then all the uh, handles, each one is individually made. Each door has its own motif for the edged glass. The frosted glass reads as kind of a mint green to me and there's a lot of plants out in the desert that have that same silvery green tone. This stone structure that you see was a planter. It had cactus and plants in it. And Scott said he didn't need another planter, but he would love a bar. Once again, we have the kind of spinal <laughs> column thing with the ribs coming off. There's 360 of these ribs and they articulate to form kind of another shape. So if you've ever had a drink standing around a planter, it's just not as great. It was just um, incredible craftsmanship. Bab Doolittle had an Apple computer and it was and clear plastic the thought, the, greenish. The idea I made the desk it, this, this to match the computer. Originally, all the light switch plates so in entire, the whole house were made for this. I'm thinking that that entire, let me back that up. That entire desk area is, is it glass or is it marble, polished marble? Apple computer and it was clear plastic, greenish. I made the desk to match the computer. Originally, all the light switch plates in the whole house were made for this old school analog type light switch. When Scott moved in, he wanted to update the lighting system. This is one of the only remaining one, and we're hoping in the future when we have a little bit more time to make new switch covers. Wait the do the were kind of introverted people, so they never thought that they would need more than four chairs at their dining table. It's cantilevered uh, fully me. on a steel tube. It passes through the column and continues out to the uh, exterior dining table. I like the orange color of the Rosa Verona because in a lot of the concrete, there are similar colored stones related to the tone of this. This is the living room. Uh, it has a fireplace. When Ken and I were That's designing so it, cool. he did this concrete shell. And I did this portion. I was kind of thinking one of those sea creatures, I think it's called an otolus. When I was designing this, I bent the stairs up to continue under this concrete shell, and I think it that works so pretty well. Cool. Jay, the original owner, he used to like to go hiking in the canyons down in South Palm Springs, and he really likes the river rocks. We use these in the bathroom, and this is just a continuation. That is so cool. Look at that bathtub. Oh my, hold on. And this is just a continuation. Oops. That is just, that is so cool. I, oh my goodness. Wow. Sorry guys. That just, that, that is just the, one of the coolest looking bathtubs I have ever seen. I know, I wonder if those are just, uh, I wonder, they had, they have had, they had to have tumbled. I think he says that they, that all those rocks are from around, you know, where they're, where, where the house is. I wonder if they tumbled them for a, at least a little bit. I wonder. Probably. 
The entrance to this room is kind of a homage to Frank Lloyd Wright, who used to like to compress you into a tiny space. And then when you get through, it gets voluminous. Scott was wanting another bedroom, so we decided to build this bed. It's the biggest thing I've ever built as far as a piece of furniture. Originally, Scott was thinking that it would be more of a gathering place than a bedroom, like a bunch of friends could get on here. He likes it so much now that it's used as his primary bedroom. Dang. This is the primary that bathroom. Is so this is the cool. bronze, his and her sink. I really oh let goodness. it go on this one. Uh, I didn't hold back. I couldn't tell you what the design for this is inspired by. It was more of just a process of drawing and drawing and drawing until I came up with a shape I liked. In order to get this up here, it weighs so much. We made a wheel out of a uh, round circle out of plywood, put the sink in it and rolled it from the driveway all the way up here. <laughs> This is the primary pool? bedroom. It's, if you see here, this is the lighting fixture that you saw before. That That's where we are. We're on top of that. The bed is situated oh, wow. to look out uh, the clear story. And it's really beautiful at night to see all the stars. Oh, man. The Doolittles were really into books, so they wanted as many books as possible to fit in here. The wood sat for six years in the garage on stickers to dry out. And then I put it together. When these were made, these reveals were the thickness of a dime. And you can see that even though these have 11 coats of automotive finish on them, what was the thickness of a dime is now almost three eighths of an inch. You can see how much wood shrinks in the desert. Nowadays, you can't buy this automotive finish and um, this is I'm not uh, exactly sure. highly toxic talking about clear uh, coating stuff them? from the 80s. <laughs> this room oh, is a guest my. bedroom. It kind of feels to me like a little cathedral in here. It has a different feel from the rest of the house. If you have the choice between cantilevering and not cantilevering, I always choose to cantilever. So this desk is cantilevered. The bed here wow. has uh, shelves. The Marble was in the form of a huge block about the size of a small car, and every oh piece of marble in here came out of the same rock. We still haven't completed wow. the house, so this is one of those details. I just jimmy rigged something, and these still have to be uh, fabricated. Oh, man. This is the guest bathroom, and it's one of my favorite rooms in the house. I don't Jeez. know what I was thinking, but I just went crazy with the marble. And I fabricated these sinks and cabinets. I just love the shapes and the volumes. When I was wow. in college, there was a, a furniture maker there is really famous named Jack Hopkins. And he taught me to make furniture by stacking wood. And then I took his technique and transferred it to marble. Wow. The columns the swimming pool? <laughs> all go down into the ground approximately 14 feet. The placement mm. of the house was totally up to Ken. It just goes to show you his genius, though, that it's one thing to be looking at a topographical map, but it blows your mind to try to think about how you could place a building in a mass of boulders. It's almost beyond imagination how his mind works. One of the main premises that the interior and exterior become Dude. one as much as possible. The house floor begins at the street and flows through the whole house. The material for it came from a rock slide. It's an exact match in material and color for the boulders that are in the house. The boulders just flow right through the floor out into the landscape. I think this house will be around forever because of the choice of materials. It's basically stone that's been ground up and put back together. I'm a little bothered sometimes by the label of organic architecture. One influence that I never talked about through my whole career was 
abstract expressionist painting. And you have like Jackson Pollock and you have Mark Rothko and they're just completely different. To me, I would just say, this is like Ken's thing, like Ken's an artist. I don't know if trying to put a label on it really helps to describe what it is. Look at that. Incredible. It just needs a swimming pool. The house, it has a certain austerity to it, but on the same token, I think because of the choice of materials, it feels really warm inside the house to me, but it still has a little bit of edge to it, which I really like. When you have people in this space, it is great. It is really wonderful. Even though it was never made for entertaining, it's the perfect spot to entertain. My work on the house has taught me everything about designing and fabricating, especially in recent years, it's taught me to be more social, enjoy showing it to people. And so I feel really good about that. This house comes as close wow. as anything could be to the feeling you get from like looking at a Mark Rothko painting or listening to John Coltrane. I hope it gets that feeling. Damn, dude. All right. Well, there you go, you guys. Uh, Architectural Digest. And that is, in, it like, they had made a swimming pool with the, with the river rocks. Uh, integrating them, at the very least, you know, or making the whole pool like that. Uh, that would have been sick. Um, but other than that, that that's just uh that's some art going on there that's not a house that's artwork that somebody's living in <clears throat> anyway thanks for watching guys uh hope you enjoyed as much as i did